that one of the greatest enemies to our progress and success of every believer is this insidious and destructive spirit called fear. Evil spirits are recognized by what they do. Amen. Let me say that again. Evil spirits are recognized by what they do, and this demon is no different. And you heard me say demon. I'm going to tell you something maybe you didn't realize, but fear is a demonic spirit. I said fear is a demonic spirit. It is derived, backed up, and pushed by demonic power. To walk in the victory purchased by our Lord Jesus Christ, we must slam the door on fear. Amen? I said we must slam the door on fear. Psalm 23, verse 1 through 6 said, New King James Version, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anointed my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You may be seated this morning. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want to share with you this morning on this thought, facing the future without fear. Say that with me. Facing the future without fear. I want to say this to you. There are now there are certain there's certain emotions that God put inside of us. There are certain feelings that God put inside of us. In other words, if something dangerous is about to happen, there may be a type of fear that overtakes you. Because something dangerous is about to take place. That's not a wicked thing. That's something God put in you. Amen? And then there's a fear that talks about a fear of God, which doesn't mean we're to be afraid of God, but we're to be respectful of God. Amen? So you have that human emotion that if something adverse or something bad or something difficult is about to happen, that that certain kind of fear may overtake you. And then there's that fear again where you respect God, you honor God, and you love God so much. But the fear I want to talk to you about today is a fear that is belched up out of the pits of hell. And God wants me to say it to you again. He wants us to face our future without fear. He does not want us to be afraid. He doesn't want us to fear tomorrow. He doesn't want us to fear the things of life. He doesn't want us to be afraid in every situation of our life. But so many people live in constant fear. Fear of what happened yesterday. Fear of what's happening right now. Fear of what's coming up tomorrow. Fear, 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 fear. That's not of God. I'm going to preach to all of us in this room, including me. That is not of God. Amen. We have this passage of Scripture, or, or let me just say it this way. So often we read Psalm 20, 23, and it blesses our heart. It ministers to us, and we love this passage of Scripture because it's been an amazing source of comfort. It's been assurance so many different in so many different circumstances, in so many different situations in our life. It has been strength unto us. Amen. It has been an encouraging word along the way. And thank God for His Word. Thank God for the encouragement of His Word. But in this message today, I want to draw, go back to one particular verse. And I want to draw from it this morning, and it's verse number 4. And it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will what? Fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me 
That same verse, that, that same verse in the Living Bible says it like this. Even when walking through the dark valley of death, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me, guarding, guiding all the way. Then the New Living Translation, which is a translation that I've really been reading a lot lately. It says, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. Now, there's twice where it said, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Now, when David writes this, what we understand, he, he understood something about the fear of death. He understood something about facing death. Literally, when David speaks of the valley of the shadow of death, he is speaking about the terrors that one often experiences when they are standing on the brink of death itself. For he had known that in many occasions, in times of battle, but yet one particular time in the Word of God, it tells us about when he is running from King Saul. And no doubt David running from Saul, he often felt very near to death because he knew that if any moment King Saul found him, his life would be over. And as a result of this, David had learned how to process through his fears. He learned how to work his way through his fears and how to slam the door on them. Now, I want to say this to you this morning, and I want you to hear it very well. We need to be able to do the same. We've got to learn to slam the door on our fear. Amen? Amen? I want you to call your name, and I want you to say it with me. I'm going to call mine, you call yours. You ready? Keith, slam the door on fear. Say it again. Keith, slam the door on fear. We've got to learn how to slam the door on the fear in our life that is adverse and brought up by the enemy. Amen. To slam the door on fear is not just ignoring the object of our fears. Because many times there are objects that bring a reality that put us in a place that if we're not careful, it will allow us to be fearful. To slam the door on fear, you must... Go to something greater than the thing that causes your fear. And that something greater is called the Word of God. The only way you can truly overcome fear, the fear of the enemy and the fear of life, is to go to the Word of God and get established in the Word of God and let it speak to the areas of your life that you're walking through in the moment. Because I would tell you, you'll never find yourself in a place in life that the Word of God doesn't have something to say about where you are. Amen? You'll never find yourself in a situation that the Word of God does not have an answer for where you are, and it will not speak to where you find yourself. To slam the door on fear, you have to identify it for what it is, and you have to identify it for what it does. You can't slam the door on fear until you recognize what it is. You can't slam the door on fear until you recognize what it does. You must consider fear as public enemy number one. I want to say this to everybody in this room. There's so many different ways that the enemy attacks people in this late hour. Because he's loosed every demon of hell. He's loosed every trick in the book. Everything he's got, he's launching it out. Everything he's got, he's working diligently and as hard as he can because he knows Jesus is about to return in the clouds of glory and he knows what he's going to do. He better do it now. But listen to me this morning. One of the greatest weapons he has in his arsenal is called fear. Are you listening to me? It is called fear and it controls fear. So many people. So let me say it again. You need to look at fear as public enemy number one that you need to launch an attack against. Now hear me out. Fear is a crippling spirit. It paralyzes and it neutralizes. Fear is a magnet that pulls you toward disaster. Did you hear that? It pulls you toward disastrous things. Remember what Job said. He said, the thing that I have greatly feared has come upon me. The thing that Job was the most afraid of came up on his life. You know why? Because he was afraid of it. You know why? Because he feared it. 
Amen? And I want to say this to you, to all of us. If we're not careful, what we fear the most will come upon us. So we have to learn to stand against that fear. Fear is destructive in nature because why? It is a child of the devil. I'm going to say that again. It is a child of the devil. Fear is the devil's counterpart to faith. In other words, God works by faith, right? The devil works by fear. So let's say it again. God works by faith. The devil works by fear. To slam the door on fear, you must hate it. To slam the door on anything, you must hate it. So I'm going to ask you today, do you love fear or do you hate fear? Or are you somewhere in between? The only way you can shut fear out of your life is come to a point in a place where you hate it so much that you're willing to slam the door on it no matter what. You must see it as the devil trying to rob you of every precious thing in your life because that's what it will do. Fear is a sucker. It will suck every ounce of life out of you. Can I get a witness? Can anybody in this room attest to that? Fear will suck every ounce of life out of you. It will drain your soul of any hope that things could ever get better. Amen. It will wring you out like a dish rag. It will drain you so that you don't feel like you have anything left anymore. If you don't conquer your fear, it will squeeze every drop of joy out of your life. Amen. I said it will squeeze every drop of joy out of your life. Look over at your neighbor and say this. It's time to slam the door on fear. Now look at him again and say, slam the door. Say it again. Slam the door. I wanted to bring a, a door up here on the, the stage today just so I could slam it. I would slam one of them, but they're only easers. You can't slam them. Fear is a thief that will rob you of a thousand blessings. Let's just get real. You want to get real? Puts you in my place. I'm going to speak for me, okay? Fear has robbed me of some blessings. You know why, TJ? Because I allowed it. You know why? Because I let it. You can put yourself in that place. Fear has robbed us of a thousand blessings along the way. But we've got to come to the place that we say, not today, no more, end of the line. I'm slamming the door on fear. It will not rob me of any more blessing in my life. Oh, hallelujah. Now I come to you with a heavy heart today. I hope you're listening with very intent ears because you've got to get this today. It's going to change some people's lives after this morning. Fear is a child of the devil. We made that clear a while ago. Fear comes the same way faith does. You hear that? Fear comes the same way faith does, by hearing. But fear comes by hearing what the devil has to say rather than what God has to say. When you start listening to what the enemy is saying or what is inspired by the devil, it will bring fear in your life. Fear robbed a generation of their inheritance. Fear almost took Peter to a watery grave. Fear is the dark room where negatives are developed. Amen. Fear robs the eyes of sight and it robs the heart of hope. Fear will cause you not to be able to see what God wants you to see. And fear will cause your heart not to be able to hope in the Lord like you once did. The Bible says that fear hath torments. The fear has torment. Whew, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Fear is a killer. Please hear me this morning. Zero into this preacher today. Fear is a killer emotionally, mentally, and physically. Spiritually, fear is a killer. It kills dreams, it kills destinies, it throws a dark cloud of despair over everything that is good. 
I'll say that again. It throws a dark cloud of despair over everything that is good. You must decide, I'm going to slam the door on fear. And hear me now, nobody else can do it for you. You got to do it for yourself. I've seen some people in my life that are so fearful about every little detail, every little thing. And if I could, I'd like to slam the door right in front of them for them. But I can't. That's a choice they have to make. But I've had my own fears that I need to slam the door upon. But you have to understand, you've got to decide. You've got to make the choice. You've got to decide. Are you going to slam the door? Now, if you make that decision, how are you going to do it? Hear this. How you going to do it? Well, first of all, what you feed grows. I'm going to say this slowly and calmly. What you feed grows. How are you going to slam the door in fear? What you feed grows. You must decide, I will feed my faith and starve my fears. You have to decide, I will feed my faith. I will strengthen my faith. I will build my faith. I will establish my faith. I will continue in my faith. I will stand firmly on my faith. And I will starve the fears that have plagued my life. <clears throat> now here's what I needed to get to today. I need to give you a real truth that we do not like to accept sometimes and we do not like to hear. So look over at your neighbor and say, buckle up your seatbelt and hang on. Here's something we don't like to understand, we don't like to hear, and we don't like to accept. But it is true. Faith in God, are you listening? Faith in, in God and love for God does not guarantee us a problem-free life. I'm going to let that land for a second. Faith in God and love for God does not guarantee that you'll never have a problem, that you'll never have a difficulty. Faith in God is no guarantee that you'll never get sick. Faith in God is no guarantee that your children will never get on drugs. It's no guarantee that your children will not go wayward. Faith in God is no guarantee that you'll never suffer financially. Are you listening? Faith in God is no guarantee that you'll never have hardships. Faith in God is no guarantee that you will never go through tough places. Faith in God does not mean you will not have hard seasons along the way. But let me tell you this. Faith in God does guarantee that He will be there and that He will take care of you no matter where you find yourself. If you get sick, He's still God. Oh, if you go through financial difficulty, He's still God. If your children are wayward, He's still God. If life is adverse, He's still God. And He will, faith in God assures you that God will be there. He didn't say you wouldn't struggle. He didn't say you wouldn't go through things. We have to learn to live in the power and the authority of what God has. Listen, we got to learn to live, abide by, in the authority and the power of what God has said. Listen, I'm going to say this slow because don't you get it. We've got to learn how to live in the power and the authority of what God has said, not what we wish He said. Not what we presumed He said. It's important. It's not what you wish God said, not what you presume what God said. What? We've got to learn to operate in the authority and the power of what He said. He said we'd go through adverse places. He said we'd have those moments. He told us that. But he also said, I will be with you to the very ends of the earth. 
earth. Oh, I'm talking to somebody in this room. The truth is he never promised us that we wouldn't go through some adverse places. He never promised us we wouldn't go through some adverse seasons in our life. Hear this. For many a pretty picture of a perfect world has been painted where everything always turns out wonderful just because you are saved. For a lot of people, this pretty picture has been painted that everything's going to be rosy and everything's going to be grand. Everything's going to be glorious all the time just because you got saved. That's not real life. I said, that's not real life. God didn't say that. I'm trying to help some people today. I'm trying to help all of us. In real life, Here's another one we don't like to hear. In real life, sometimes bad things happen, even to good people. How many lives in the real world? Those of you that ain't got your hand up, I'm praying for you. Your fairy tale world, you got to get out of it. In real life, sometimes bad things happen. And it even happens to good people. But through faith, no matter what comes your way, you can look at any situation and say, like Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I will condemn it. But in every situation you can say, like Isaiah 59, 19, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. 1 John 5 and 4, whatever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Do you get what I'm saying this morning? God didn't say you wouldn't go through it. But he said, no weapon for and against you shall prosper. He didn't say you wouldn't go through it, but he said, I'll be with you. Many of God's people believe that when they go through adverse seasons in their life, it means they sinned or they failed God or their faith was weak somewhere. Somebody hear me today. But God sent me by to tell you something. God sent me by to clear the air. He sent me by to tell somebody that just because you're going through an adverse season does not mean you have sinned. It doesn't mean you failed God. It doesn't mean that your faith has grown weak. It's a season that God is trusting you to walk through. I said it's a season that God is trusting you to walk through. And I'm going to ask you this morning, can God trust you? Can God trust you? I ask myself that. Can God trust me? Sometimes God allows you to walk through things because he's trusting you to go through it. Faith in God did not keep Joseph from being betrayed by his brothers and him being thrown into a pit. Faith in God did not keep the three Hebrew boys from being going to the fiery furnace. Joseph had faith. The Hebrews had faith in God. Faith in God did not keep Daniel from being thrown in the lion's den. Daniel had faith in God. He prayed three times a day. You and I need to know that facing the future without fear does not mean everything is going to be peaches and cream. And if that's what you believe, I need to invite you to this altar right now and you need to get a reality check of where you are. Because facing your future without fear doesn't mean everything's going to be rosy all the time. It doesn't mean that the devil's going to just roll over and play dead. Because I got news for you. He ain't like your puppy dog. He ain't going to roll over and play dead. He ain't giving up. 
Facing the future without fear is about slamming the door on fear. Slamming it, locking it, keeping it shut. And having the faith and confidence that no matter what comes your way or what goes, if God be for us, who can be against us? Please hear me today. If God be for you, who can be against you? Nobody. It's about knowing that whatever we go through, God is with us. In Isaiah 41.10, Living Bible said, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Then in Isaiah 43 and 2, the living Bible said, When you go through deep waters and tr great trouble, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. Sometimes you think you're going to drown. Sometimes you think you're going to go under. Sometimes you think you ain't coming back up. Sometimes you think life's going to end. Sometimes you think there is no future. Sometimes you think there is no tomorrow. Sometimes you think there is no way. But let me say it again. When you go through deep waters and great trouble, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned. How many's ever been oppressed? Get your hand up. How many's ever been depressed? Get your hand up. Because you know you've been there. But when you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up, and the flames will not consume you. The devil can't consume you unless you let him. I said the devil can't consume you unless you let him. Give me a little more on the monitor up here, brother. The devil cannot consume you unless you let him. God never promised us we would not have to go through anything, but he promised his presence would go with us and he would sustain us no matter where we find ourselves. Amen. One of the first keys to slamming the door is to know that fear is not just a negative condition. I'll say that again. Key fact of slamming the door is knowing that fear is not just a negative condition. Fear is actually a spirit. Did you hear me? Fear is actually a spirit. That means that fear is a living personality that is seeking residence in your life. It's a living spirit that's seeking a place to abide and live inside of you. You must resist fear like you would resist somebody trying to break in your house. Listen to me. If I'm in my house and you try to break in and I know you're there, you better know that I'm going to meet you on the other side with something that's going to send you right back out. Do you understand? It's either going to send you out on your feet or on your back, one of the two, but it's going to send you right back out. You won't let people break in your house. Stop letting the fear break into your life. I said, stop letting fear break into your life. Stop letting fear break into your life. I want to say it again. It's a spirit. It's a living personality that wants to take residence in your life. It's a thief that wants to kill, steal, and destroy. The same way you would meet somebody coming in your house, you got to meet the devil with the word of God and say, not today, devil. I'm drawing the line in the name of Jesus Christ. I got my Holy Ghost gun in my hand, and I dare you, devil, to cross the line. I dare you, devil, to take another step. I dare you, devil, to try to come in. Are you listening to this preacher this morning? It's important. It's imperative. 2 Timothy 1, 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. He doesn't want you to be fearful. God didn't make you to be fearful. But he made you to have power. He made you to walk in love. 
And listen, he made you to have a sound mind. You know what that means? Think clearly. You know what that means? Think for yourself. You know what that means? Think according to the ways of God. Have a sound mind. Not a cluttered mind. Not a confused mind. But a sound mind. Oh, I feel him. Fear is always lurking and creeping around, trying to gain access into your life any way it can get in. But I want to share something with you just blesses my heart. I love the Apostle Paul. How many loves the Apostle Paul? How many loves the Apostle Paul? Man, I love the Apostle Paul. We need a lot more like him in this last day and hour. I love Paul, and I love the way he handled his fear. Listen to this. you got to get this. When it came time for Paul to die, history records that he ran to the chopping block. You ever read it? History records he ran to the chopping block. What was Paul doing? Why would Paul do something like that? He was robbing fear of the power it had over his life. He was not afraid of death. He was not afraid to die. Number one, he knew where he was going. Number one, number two, he knew who had control of his future and his eternity. But listen to me. He was robbing fear of his power over his life. He was slamming the door on fear. He was treading down fear on the way to his execution. Why? He was saying, you're not going to take my life, but I'm going to run and I'm going to give my life away for the one who gave everything for me. Devil, you're not going to take it from me, but I'm going to run and I'm going to give my life because I give it to the one who gave everything for me, who surrendered all for me. I'm giving my all for him. Oh, and I like this. He slammed the door on fear. This message is not about avoiding the turbulence in life. Because we're all going to have turbulent waters. We're all going to have turbulent winds. I don't know about you, but I don't like being on an airplane when they hit them air pockets. Whew. Gives you a little something queasy in your stomach. It's called turbulence. We all have turbulent moments. But how it's not about avoiding the turbulence in life. But this message is about how to ride it out and come out on top. It's not about avoiding it. It's about how you're going to come through it. And how you're going to come out on top. How are you going to be victorious? How are you going to make it? How, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Listen, no longer shall we be held back by the fear of the past or by the fear of the future. Say this with me. We will not be slaves to fear. Say it with me. We will not be slaves to fear. Some of you said that so puny. Say it like you mean it. We will not be slaves to fear. Now say this with me. We are slamming the door on fear. Say it again. We are slamming the door on fear. If you're just piddle paddling around with it, the devil's going to try you and see if you are. Even if you're sincere, he'll try you. But I'm telling you this, if you'll stand firm on your faith, God will make a way. In 2 Samuel 23, verse 11 through 12, we read of one of David's 30 mighty men whose name was Shammah. I remember my wife preaching a very powerful sermon on one Sunday morning on the man Shama. But one day he was, and some of his others were gathering lentils in his pea patch. And the Philistine troops rushed in on him. Now listen to this. All those who were assisting Shama fled for fear. They were afraid. But the Bible said that Shama stood in the midst of the ground and defended it. The Bible said he would not run in fear. He didn't say it like that, but he said he stood and he defended it, which meant he would not run in fear. He slew the Philistines, and the Lord brought a great victory that day. Here's what I want you to get. When everybody else around him was running in fear, when everybody else around him was afraid, he slammed the door on fear. Quit running with the people around you that run in fear. Stand still and see the salvation of Almighty God in your life. Amen. 
He slammed the door on fear. Hear me. Our faith in God is not an escape. Listen. It is not an escape hatch to magically escape our fears. Let me say that one more time. Faith in God is not an escape hatch to magically escape our fear, but our faith is actually the endowment of supernatural grace and power of God to confront our fears and slam the door on them and put them underneath our feet. Here's a powerful statement for everybody in this room. Are you ready? Our times are in God's hands. My time is in God's hands. Your time is in God's hands. Our time, according to the Word of God, our times are in God's hand. Hands. I understand that there are 365 fear knots in the Bible. You ever studied it out? There's 365 fear knots in the Bible. How many days are in a year? You know what that tells me? It tells me there's a fear knot for every day. It tells me there's a fear knot for every morning when I get up and I open up my eyes and I face a new day. There's a fear knot that tells me I can slam the door in the face of it. There's a fear knot that says I can slam the door in what the enemy wants to try to do in my life that day. Even before I begin my day, I can stop it now. God's Word does not promise us that the future will not have trouble. We've made that clear today. But, you listening? His word doesn't promise that we won't have a future trouble free. But it does promise us that the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former house. And I don't know what that does for you, but that excites my soul. That excites my spirit. I want you to stand to your feet all over this room. Enough about fear for a moment. It's time to celebrate. You listen? Time to celebrate. We've come to a celebratory, celebratory moment. Celebrate what? We should be celebrating that we are in the greater glory days. The days of glory are not yesterday, Brother Leon. Over the years, I've heard so many people talk about the glory days, the glory days, the glory days. What the glory days? We're in the glory days. I'm not saying those days weren't glorious because they were, but understand me, we're in the glory days. We're in those glorious days we've ever known. And we need to celebrate that we are in the greater glory days and understand that the best is yet to come. Can I say that to you? The best is yet, look at your neighbor and say, the best is yet to come. Now look at him and say, when it happens, what you going to do with it? Woo. Celebrate where we're going. Celebrate that we haven't seen anything yet. Celebrate that God always saves his best for last. Celebrate that everything God has done in the past was just a warm-up for what's coming. Did you hear that? Everything God did yesterday was just a warm-up for what's getting ready to happen right now. And I got this in big, bold letters. Something big is on the horizon. Something big is before us. Something big is getting ready to happen. Something big, oh, there's an explosion in the spirit that's about to take place. Say this with me. Ooh, and I'm going to close it and leave it to you. It ain't up to me. It's up to you, TJ. All It's up to us. Say this with me. Make these declarations with me. Will you do it? I'm slamming the door on fear. Say it like you mean it. You still ain't got there yet. I'm slamming the door on fear. 
My times are in God's hands. Something big is happening. I will face the future without fear. 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 Do you know what you just said? Say it again. I will face the future. Young people say it. I will face the future without fear. Mom and daddy say it without fear. Senior don't say it without fear. We're not done yet. You ready? I refuse to be a victim. I'll fear and run away and hide. But. Say it loud. But. but. I like it when God puts a, a butt there. Almost said a big one, but I don't believe that. I love it when God puts a butt there, but I'm going to stand my ground and fight. Woo! Now let's back up on that and again. I refuse to be a victim of fear and run away and hide. But I'm going to stand my ground and fight, and fight, and fight. If that is you, get out of your seat and get to the front of this room as quick as you get here. If you're ready to slam the door on fear, get out here.